Hi, we're going to talk today about relative dating. Uh, usually make some silly joke here that doesn't really mean I'm uh, dating a cousin. Uh, what we mean here, relative means as compared to. Um, I'd normally ask my classroom if they thought I was old, and since I'm old and gray-haired, they'd say, yeah. And I'd say, well, I'm old compared to the students because all of my students are in their young teens, but I'm not old compared to my father. So I'm younger than my father, but I'm older than my students. So relative here means as compared to. Um, tomorrow we'll get into absolute dating where we're looking at putting real numbers on something. Today we're just looking for putting things in order relative to older or younger. Now in doing that, we're going to use what's called the law of superposition. Super means above, position means where it is. So the law of superposition, I like to refer to it as the law of the dirty locker. Um, everybody knows that kid who every day takes their papers and just tosses it in to their locker and closes the locker and never takes anything home and every day just keeps throwing their papers on top. Um, if I'm looking at this locker and we're here in May, where do you imagine the work that they have from August or September would be? Would it be at the top of the pile or would it be way down at the bottom of the locker? Um, when they're throwing the things in the locker, they don't lift all the trash up and slide today's papers in underneath. They just keep throwing everything on top. So the newer things are on the top and the older things are further down. Um, I like to think of cake also. If you're looking at a layer cake, when they're building the cake after they've baked everything, they're putting each layer down, layer cake, frosting, cake, frosting, cake, frosting, but in what order? The first layer of cake goes down at the bottom. And then they put frosting and then they put the next layer of cake and frosting cake frosting cake um, so again if i'm looking at the rainbow cake the purple layer would be the first layer of cake that was put down and the red layer would be the f the last or the youngest layer if you will or the frosting on top would be the youngest because it was the last thing to go on so that's our law of superposition an undisturbed sedimentary rock keyword there sedimentary rock layers further down will be older than layers that are higher up because when sedimentary rock forms we know that big rocks on top of mountains because of erosion from wind and rain little particles and pieces break off and wash down and when they get into the lake or they get into the ocean they slow down and they settle to the bottom where they start to stack up and compact and make sedimentary rock uh, which also would be why the sedimentary rocks make um, relatively horizontal layers because gravity is pulling that sediment straight down and it's laying in a layer. Now, here's some of my relatives. Um, my grandpa Ray is older than my dad, Michael. And Michael is older than my sister, Christina. And Christina is older than Jennifer. Um, now, you don't know how, any, how old any of them are, but from this order, you would know that Jennifer is the youngest and Ray is the oldest. Well, it's not really true. Actually, I'm the youngest. But in this list, Jennifer is younger than Christina. Christina is younger than Michael. Michael is younger than Ray. So in relative order, Ray would be further down on the list and Jennifer would be at the top of the list. Um, let's take a look at some things like telephone. If you were to need to put these phones in order, I think it's pretty easy looking up here. Nobody ever guesses wrong about which is the oldest phone, and that'd be this hand crank model. Um, occasionally, they get a little mixed up in here. If you look at the phone over here, this has got a rotary dial, and these both have push buttons. So the rotary dial is older than the push buttons, but um, most folks don't recognize this. Uh, this was actually the first cell phone. Motorola put it out, the 8000X in I think 1983 or 1984, and at the time it cost just under $4,000. Uh, and if you count for inflation, that'd be about $10,000 today. And the battery, you can get about 30 minutes of talk time on it. So it was really just a status symbol. Now, if we can put these in order, we'd put the oldest at the bottom, the rotary dial would come next, the slimline princess, and lastly, we would have the first cell phone. And those would be in order from oldest moving up to the youngest. So oldest at the bottom, youngest at the top. They're in relative order. 
there's no telling how old this slim blind princess phone was or how old this rotary dial is. They were around for a really long time, but we definitely know that the crank was around before the rotary dial, which was around before the push button, which was definitely around before cell phones. If you look at these sedimentary rocks in these nice horizontal layers, which would be the oldest? That'd be layer D because it's furthest down. Which would be the youngest? That would be layer A because it's at the top. So oldest at the bottom and the youngest at the top. Now, these towels are representing sedimentary layers. Um, notice that they're kind of nice, flat, and horizontal because that's how sedimentary rock forms, but we definitely know they don't always stay that way. Um, plates move, continents shift, and uh, we do get some continents pushing in towards other continents where we see the sedimentary layers of rock kind of fold and roll in on each other. Now after that, we might get, well, hang on, that was supposed to work better. Um, we could get some erosion, and after the erosion, there we go, after the erosion, we could get more sedimentary layers built up on top of it. So even though these layers are horizontal, underneath of it, we might find some of these bold, uh, these folds and rolls, and sometimes even rolls so that they're almost like a jelly roll, so that you'd have, the oldest would still be the blue towel, but there's places where the blue towel is up higher than the pink towel. That doesn't change the fact that in undisturbed layers, it would have been lower down. So loft superposition still holds here. We just have to interpret some of the lay of the land for it. We also have some other things we're going to talk about. Igneous intrusion. Igneous rock means that we had some new rock. We've got magma that pushed up from the mantle and hardened and became brand new rock. Um, to intrude means to break in the middle of something. Now, I'm back to cake again. Um, the reason I like to think about an igneous intrusion like cutting the layers of the cake. If you think about the knife, when the knife cut through the cake, we can see that the knife cut through all of these layers. Well, that means the layers had to already be there for the knife to cut through it. So if we're seeing a place where the knife cut through the layers, the knife cut has to be younger than the layers because it cuts through them. Now, here's, what we, here's how this will look like in the rock layers. Um, let's start building up some layers of sedimentary rock. And these sedimentary rocks are just sitting here, but it's over a hot spot. And that hot spot starts to push magma upwards. And that magma is melting its way to the top. It's not cutting them apart and splitting it. Literally, the rock that was already there completely melted and got mixed in with the magma to become brand new rock. Now, once it hit the surface and started to spread out, that's actually now lava because once it touches the air, we call it lava. And after time, it would start to harden and cool off and harden. And we would get some igneous rock like granite. And we could then on top of that, get more sedimentary layers. Now, this igneous intrusion where the lava cut through, we can see it cutting through these two, these three layers. That means those three layers had to already be there before the lava cut its way to the top. So the lava has to be younger than the layers it cuts through. Even though part of this lava, this magma, this igneous intrusion down here is further down, it's still younger. So if I'm going to label these from youngest to oldest, one, two, three, uh, the fourth layer would have to go to that igneous intrusion because it cut through. Now, I know that this layer on top of the lava has to be younger because it's sedimentary rock and it built on top of it. So that would continue going up with five and six. So labeling these in order, we're still in order, but the igneous intrusion we have to watch out for. Remember, if the knife cuts through the cake, these layers of cake had to already be there, so they are younger 
than the knife cut. So the igneous intrusion will always be younger than the layers it cuts through. Um, we would also, by the way, be able to tell where this got hot enough to melt and became igneous rock, and next to it is sedimentary rock, right along the borders where we would find some metamorphic rock. Rock that was sedimentary that got hot enough to start to melt, but didn't melt all the way. And if we were coming on this, obviously we wouldn't have been here to see the igneous intrusion. We're just coming along and found the erosion on the side of a hill and we find this. We would see um, all along the boundary of layers one, two, and three, we would find that metamorphic rock, but we wouldn't see any metamorphic rock at the top of five. And this igneous rock at the top would actually be of a slightly different chemical property at the edges because it touched the air. So it was able to oxidize and there'd be some layering and some differences on how lava flows out versus how the magma pushes up. So if you take a look at this drawing, we've got sedimentary layers that are A, B, C, D, E, F, and H. Uh, layer E, G here is an igneous intrusion. So I'm gonna have you answer a few questions about putting some of these layers in order, remember, from youngest to oldest. All right, so hopefully you did notice G had to be younger than layers C, F, and H because it cuts through. If the knife cuts through the cake, the cake had to already be there. But notice it does not cut up into layer E. So layer E had to be younger than layer G. Layer E and D are going to be younger or going to be older than layer B. Layer B would have been after some erosion and new sedimentary rock putting on top. All right, so with the law of superposition, remember we've got the law of the dirty locker. Think about the, uh, the city trash. They pick up the trash every day, they take it to the dump, and they dump the trash. So today's trash is getting dumped up on top of yesterday's trash, which is on top of last week's trash, which is on top of the week before's trash. Um, think about all of the artifacts of civilization that we would find if we went digging down through the piles of trash. But how would we always know how old something is? We definitely know that younger trash would be on top of older trash. But what if, as we were excavating down through uh, the city dump, what if we found some chucks? Now, here's our problem. Just because I found a pair of chucks in the trash, that's not going to tell me much about how old that layer of the trash is. Chucks have been around since the 1950s, and they haven't changed that sneaker in the black or canvas since the 1950s. So if I'm finding these sneakers in a layer of trash, I might be in 1950s, 60s, 70s. I could be in yesterday's trash. Just these sneakers alone won't tell me much about how old that layer of trash is. Here's where we're going to have something we use an index fossil. Now, Imagine for a moment, perhaps you remember silly bands. Um, silly bands are very interesting because um, they fit my model of an index fossil really well. They weren't around, they weren't even invented until mid 2000s in Japan. They weren't sold in the United States until 2009. And that was only in one store, one Learning Express in Birmingham, Alabama. But Within one year, by August of 2010, they were sold in 8,000 different stores. And by April of 2010, um, they were in Amazon's top seven selling toys. And by December of 2010, they were controlling the top 25 list of most popular toys for Amazon. So just within a year there, just within starting to sell, between then and December of 2010, they were everywhere. Um, you, you could buy them literally anywhere. I remember you could go to IHOP and you're paying at the register for IHOP and they've got some silly bands out to sell. So you could find them, they were everywhere, they were hugely popular. But like most things, they get hugely popular with kids. Um, pretty quickly, within a couple of years, 
they weren't so popular anymore. That was like, oh, that's so last year. Nobody's doing that anymore. So this is like an index fossil. An index fossil is an organism that was very widespread. They're easy fossils to find because they were lots and lots of different places. But because they went extinct, they were only around for a relatively short period of time. Now, keep in mind, when we're talking a relatively short period of time, we're talking in terms of Earth history, not you and I regular life history. Earth being 4.6 billion years old, if something was only around for a couple of hundred thousand years or even a couple of million years, in terms of fossils, that can be a relatively short period of time. Now, back to some more of my relatives. You'd already seen Jennifer and Christina. This is my mom, Margaret, and my grandma, Afton. Now, they are in relative order in that the youngest is to the right going up to the oldest at the left. But you don't know how old any of them are. They're in relative order. You know that Margaret is older than Jennifer and that Afton is older than Margaret, but how much older? Now, if I tell you my sister Christina is 56 years old, that doesn't tell you how old Jennifer is, but now you know Jennifer has to be younger than Christina, so, Chris, so Jennifer has to be less than 56 years old, and Margaret obviously has to be older than 56, and if you actually know that that's her mom, um, well, that actually puts them 10, you know, she's not five years older. So, and you know that then Afton has to be older than Margaret, but you don't know how much, but just by having knowledge of one age, Christina's 56, kind of puts an anchor point to that relative term. So that's how we use an index fossil. If I'm looking at some fossils over here, um, trilobites and brachiopods. Brachiopods have been around a really long time. As a matter of fact, um, there are some different varieties of brachiopods that are still around now, and they go back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago. However, ammonites are really interesting. They're very easy fossils to find, and there's a lot of different varieties of them, so they evolved a lot over time. And the distinctions, the size, the shapes, the particulars of them give them a lot of reference. So for instance, if we knew that this ammonite, this particular variety of ammonite, was only around from about 192 to 194 million years ago, that anchors. We know that even though these brachiopods have been around for a really, really, really long time, this brachiopod that's in the same layer of rock had to been around at the same time as this ammonite and anything below it has to be older than the time frame we know it's from and anything above it we know is from a time that is younger than when we know it's from so like i said even though that's a two million year span in terms of earth's 4.6 billion years or 3.9 billion years that we have recorded evidence of uh, fossilized life, two million years, that narrows it down quite a lot. So that's how we use index fossils to help anchor our relative age. Again, relative age, we know oldest on the bottom and the youngest at the top.